Okay, so we're just finishing looking at some stuff to do with variable acceleration, but this looks a bit strange here because I've written the title is constant acceleration formulae, okay? We have come up with these constant acceleration formulae in a way before. How did we come up with the constant acceleration formulae previously? How did, do you remember how we came up with them? Using the graphs, what graphs do we, were we using? What were the axes? We had a displacement time graph and we also looked at another graph, the velocity time graph, okay? So actually we can derive these formulae rather than just doing them from, I think we had like a velocity time graph that was like this and we talked about the area underneath it being the displacement. Rather than it just being um, for a particular straight line graph, we can actually kind of come up with this idea through integration and differentiation as well. So it's an alternative way of proving the SUVAT formulae for constant acceleration. So I've said here, it is also possible to derive all of the constant acceleration formulae using integration, provided that we consider that acceleration is constant. I have to consider that acceleration is constant because these constant acceleration formulae only apply when acceleration is constant, of, of course, from the, the title of it. So it says here, given that a body has constant acceleration A, initial velocity U, and its initial displacement is zero meters, prove that the final velocity is V equals U plus AT. We're very familiar with that formula. And that the displacement S is UT plus a half AT squared. Now, I suppose we could go about doing this by drawing a graph like we've talked about before with a straight line graph. But I'm wanting to try and avoid doing this with graphs today because the theme of this topic has been integration. So I'm going to try and find out um, what the final velocity is. So if I wanted to find velocity from acceleration, what do I usually do? How do I go from, from acceleration to velocity? Nibble? I integrate, don't I? So if I'm going to try and find out what the velocity is, I'm going to integrate the acceleration with respect to time. OK, we've said that before. We know our little table says S, V, and A. And when you go down, you differentiate. And when you go up, you integrate. So if I've got the acceleration and I want to find out what the velocity is, I'm going to integrate. Now, because A is a constant here, I'm going to integrate it with respect to T. What will that go as, um, what will that integrate to? No, what does A integrate to? AT. Just AT, plus you get a constant that you have there. Now, they told us something at the beginning. They said that its initial velocity is u. So that means that v is equal to u when t is equal to 0. The initial velocity is u. And you can see what's going to happen here now. So when I substitute these into my integrated expression, I get u equals a multiplied by 0 plus c. So the constant of integration was u. So putting that all back together, v equals <gasps> a t plus u, which is the more, if we rearrange that, we have it in the more common form that we have of v equals u plus a t. So it's nice that the formula we've had before, where we talked about finding the area under a curve, the area under an, um, a velocity time graph and things like that, that they still work with integration. It would be very worrying if we tried these ideas out and they work in one way, but then suddenly it doesn't work in another way. It's important that we get them to work in that whole way. So just a quick reminder of what we did. To find out velocity, we integrated the acceleration with respect to time, hence getting AT, but we got a constant of integration. We took the information given to us in the question to find out what the constant of integration was, and it turned out to be the initial speed. So then the final speed was AT plus the initial speed rearrange it to get it in the form that we're most familiar with, okay?
That was part A of the question. We're now going to try and prove from part B of the question, we're going to try and prove what the displacement is. Well, I have forgot what the velocity is, and I want the displacement, so clearly I'm going to have to integrate to be able to find out what this is. So the displacement is the integral of the velocity with respect to time. But I know what the velocity is. I've got that the velocity is u plus at. So s is equal to the integral of u plus at with respect to time. Pfizer, what will this integrate to with respect to t? So let's just pretend that that was a number. Let's say that that was just like 3. How would you integrate 3t with respect to time? 3 over 2t squared. OK, well, now it's not a 3t. It's just an at. So what do you think it will be as instead? a over 2t squared. OK, so just, for, just if it's ever something that's a constant and it just puts you off, just pretend it's a number and then put it back afterwards. And eventually you'll get comfortable with doing it without having to put them as a number. So when I'm saying it's a constant, it just means treat it like a number. And what else do I need to add on at the end? I need to add on a plus C, OK? Now, what does the question tell us at the start? That's, that's about Not at the start of the question, but what does it tell us at the start of this journey? The initial displacement is zero. It says that here, the initial displacement is zero, which means that the displacement is zero when the time is zero. So you get zero equals u multiplied by zero plus a divided by two multiplied by zero squared plus c. So c is equal to zero, which tells me that s is equal to ut Plus, instead of writing a over 2t squared, I'm just going to write a half a t squared. And so there you have an alternative proof of why s equals ut plus a half a t squared. So you could be asked to prove some of these in the exam. They might ask you to prove it using integration. They may give you a graph that was like a speed time graph. So this was one that we did right at the beginning where we said this was u and this was v. You might be able to use that to find out that v equals u plus at, or you might be asked to do it through integration. But you've got that in your notes about how to find it from a graph as well. So there's now two ways you can be asked to prove this. This is something that is new to this version of the A-level. So if you've got any older brothers and sisters, they won't have been asked to prove these formulae before. They might have been shown how to do it, but it's the kind of thing that you will be expected to know, which means it could come up when you're being in, in a, an assessment of this. Okay?